It's the international break, so welcome to a No Nay Never Fantasy Premier League special. No Nay Never Podcast! I'm Dave Roberts and I'm joined by not one, not two, but three of the managers from our current top ten in the No Nay Never Fantasy Premier League. More about that later. Unlike on our regular preview show, I don't mind admitting that on this occasion, my FPL know-how is slightly inadequate in comparison to the rest of my guests. However, hopefully we can discover some useful hints, tips and tricks, which might just help the rest of us to up our FPL game and maybe even close the gap to the leaders before the end of the season. Uh, So first, some introductions. Uh, You may have already heard Adam Dennett on our analysis shows during this season, and as well as being our runner-up from last season's FPL, he's also the reigning Pope Master Quiz Champion from 2021, and he's also appeared on the preview show in the past to pass on some of his FPL insight. Hi there, Adam. How are you doing? Yeah, I'm good. Thanks, Dave. Nice to have a bit of a filler on, and uh, the main reason I've done this is just to get some some insight into the, um, the other top of the table managers and uh, hopefully they'll give away some of the tricks for me to catch them at the end of the season. Hopefully we'll all learn something. Yeah, very much so. Uh, Just on that subject as well, we've also got two uh, special guests who are not only riding high in our league for the current season, but have past experience of being inside the top 10,000 in the entire FPL. And when you consider that there are several million managers out there, there's over 9 million this season, that's really quite some achievement. Uh, first of all, we've got Luke Lambert, whose uh, team is Ronald, Ronaldinho's Rockets. Um, he's had one previous top 1,000 finish and another top 5,000 finish. So welcome to uh, Luke. Welcome to the No Only Never podcast. Thanks, Dave. Thanks thanks for inviting me on. It's, uh, it's a pleasure to be here and I'm hoping to pass on a few of my useful tips to some of our listeners uh, throughout the show. Fingers crossed. Yeah, hopefully. Uh, good to have you on. Well, welcome, first of all, to you and also to uh, Sean Retty. Retford Rovers is his team. Uh, he's had three previous, um, along with uh, top performances in Sky Fantasy Football. Uh, welcome to the Non Never podcast, Sean. Hello, thanks for having me on. Yeah, v- very welcome to have you on and uh, hopefully, as I say, we'll, we'll learn something uh, from, from both of you. Uh, Before we get into that, we're going to uh, give you updates. It's uh, been a little while since we've been able to do any updates on our preview show, just with the way that the timings have worked out. Uh, So I'm going to go back in time a little bit, and I'm going to give an update from Game Week 29, first of all. Uh, Appreciate that we've had Game Week 30 completed already. Um, So what I'm going to do is, at the end of the show, I'm going to do a Game Week 30 update and also do a March Manager of the Month final update. Uh, but before we do that, we're going to do a game week 29 update. Uh, first of all, in terms of our top 10, uh, our countdown for the top 10, we had George Berry in 10th place, uh, Brody Robinson in 9th, uh, D Hunter in 8th, Jack Toner was 7th, Will Cooper in 6th, Jacob Sapwell in 5th, we've got uh, Ursay in 4th, Adam, our very own Adam Dennett there in 3rd place, uh, Tall Paul in second, and uh, our guest Luke Lambert leading the way uh, after game week 29. Um, in terms of March Manager of the Month, this was an interim update after game week 29, so not the final standings. Uh, we had uh, top 11, because we had joint 10th place, were D Hunter and Angel Delgado. We had Samuel Nuvi in ninth, Will Cooper in eighth, Josh Utley in seventh, uh, Lee Puxty in sixth, Steve Holden was fifth, Ian Measures fourth, well in March Manager of the Month was in third, Tall Paul in second, and Luke Lambert again leading the way uh, for March Manager of the Month. Uh, if you're interested as well, we've got the Kings of Game Week 29. Uh, that was in a 5 2 3 formation, slightly unusual. And if you'd have had all these 11 players, Uh, That would have got you 165 points. Just running through that team, we had uh, quite a few Liverpool players in there. Uh, We had Alisson in goal. We had uh, Matip and Robinson also in defence. We had Romero of Tottenham also in defence, as well as Connor Cody and Virgil van Dijk. Uh, In midfield, we had uh, Thomas Partey of Arsenal. 
Uh, we had also Ben Rama of West Ham, Ronaldo of Manchester United, and also the two other strikers along with him were uh, Harry Kane of Tottenham, a uh, regular top point scorer, and also Cucho of uh, Watford. That was our Kings of Game Week 29. So as I say, that's our interim update for 29. We're going to do an update for Game Week 30 at the end of the show and reveal the March Manager of the Month. Before that, um, Adam's got some questions to go through with our guests with a well hope of trying to get some uh, insight and I think uh, some of us will have more to learn than others, but I'll leave it to you, Adam, to see what you can find out. Yeah, thanks, Dave. Can't wait to see who's won that uh, coveted sticker for March. Maybe I'll be getting my second of the season, who knows? Um, yeah, I just wanted to um, say thanks thanks again for, for you guys coming on. Um, really good to get some uh, some insight into some um, to what what you've done to make you successful this season and uh, and over past seasons. Um, I'll start start with you, Sean. Um, have you got any memories of what first got you into fantasy football? I know you play both games and are very good at both games. Um, and have you got any early memories from um, from playing those games that that have stuck with you over the years? I've probably played fancy games for about 15 years. Um, I remember playing it at school when everyone in our, in our tea would be making the teams at the start of the season. And um, uh, always started in uh, like work leagues and that kind of thing and then just carried on, carried on playing from there. I used to play the Yahoo game. I don't even know if it's still a thing anymore. You still enjoy it as much now as you always did then? Yeah, for me, it's um, it's a bit of a. I find it, I find it better than than betting because it, it's kind of like a, it's a free way to bet in it. Really, that's how I see it, and uh, keeps yourself interested in all the games. Obviously, it's when uh, when we all first started, but only weren't in the Premier League, so it um, way to keep your eye in really. <laughs> yeah, it definitely makes every game uh, more interesting. Like, there's normally something going on. Um... That makes you want to watch all the live games, and it's probably even more infuriating. Actually, you're only watching and wanting one or two players to do well rather than a team. But um, mm. yeah, no, that's great. Thanks. Uh, same to you, uh, Luke. Yeah, I, I can remember my, my first memory is actually um, when the national newspapers um, did did football, fancy football in in their in their press, and you had to you had to write in you had to write into the newspaper to send your team in. I can remember doing that. That must have been twenty odd, twenty odd years ago. So that's my first mem- memory of it. And you used to have to look at the look at the scores in the newspaper every week. So it wasn't as accessible as it as it is as it is now um, as it is now clearly. And then in terms of the actual fancy Premier Premier League, I can remember uh, like like Sean doing it at school and and at, and at um, university and, and having good good crack with your friends about your teams. I can remember one particular season where I was doing pretty well and. Everyone had Ronaldo, John Terry, Lampard, the players, you know, back in the day that, you know, you, the likes of you have Salah now, it was, it was Terry, and, Terry and Ronaldo back then. And I can remember one week everyone picked Drogba because Chelsea had a, a really good game at home, a really easy game at home. And I thought, no, I'm not going to pick Drogba, I'm going to pick Benjani for Portsmouth. And everyone said, Luke, why are you picking Benjani? What's he doing all season? So I thought, no, I'm going to stick you in. Anyway, Drogba was sent off and Benjani scored a hat trick. So it was a it was a good week. And that's a memory that stuck with me and my friends over the last last few years and we still talk about that now. Yeah, it's definitely come a long way as the fantasy Premier League app. But yeah, it's um one that you can always reminisce about those uh, those sort of events. Uh just sticking with you, Luke, for the next one. Um, what sort of FPL manager would you say you are? Conservative, aggressive? Um, and are you conscious? Is that reflected in how many points each you take over a season? What what would you tend to do? Are you worried about yeah, that sort of thing? I guess I'm probably more aggressive than I probably should be. I think um, you've got to look to play the, the percentages as much as you, as you can. Um, there's actually a link between players, top poker and top chess players, uh, who are also very, very good at, at, at FPL. And um, as Natalie Bromley would know when you're playing when you're playing poker, it's about making making the right calls, making the percentage calls, um, and and that's pretty important, I think, throughout the throughout the season in, in fantasy Premier League. And sometimes you get a bit sometimes you get a bit over aggressive, and, and I certainly do that because you're emotional. Um, but it's about you need to be, I think, pretty conservative to, to, to do well. I guess the one example of that this season 
um, is uh, Liverpool had a, a double game week a few game weeks ago where they were playing um, Watford at, no sorry Leeds at home and Norwich at home and so the percentage play and the play that most players in the top 10,000 or 100,000 did was to triple captain Salah um, and there were ways around it but that's what you should have done um, and thankfully I did do that but you know I don't know whether you did, did that Sean but m- most people you know that's what you needed to do to, to be successful in, in that game week and that was the percentage play it was quite dull it was quite boring but yeah, sometimes you got you got to just do what do what's best. Yeah, I think uh, I came on here and advised everyone to do that, and then didn't do it myself, um, which was a bit silly at the uh, at the end of the day. Um, so uh, same same question to you, uh, Sean. Would um, what would you say your approach is um, across all fantasy games? Is it is it the same? Are you quite conservative, aggressive? Um, and and yeah, do you do you tend to take many points hitch, hits um, over the season, or do you try and avoid it where you can? It, it's funny you spoke about the link between FPL and poker. I, I played uh, poker a lot when I was at university myself, so there is definitely a link between the two. But um, I think between the two games of FPL and Sky, I think that the two need to be treated differently. When I play Sky, and I finished fifth last year, so I did an unbelievable season, but. You need to be cautious with that all season and then you'll catch up at the end of the season. With FPL, I tend to play it a, a week or two at a, at a time, just judge it from there. Um, try not to set too many hits together, but don't be don't be afraid of doing it if it's the right decision to make. So, so I just yeah. I just play it a couple of weeks at a time, just just judge it off that. Yeah, that's uh, kind of going on to one of my next questions really but I'm just wondering Dave do you think uh, one year Natalie's just going to come from nowhere and just beat us all and just it was just a whole big poker trick all the way along uh, no I don't actually <laughs> <laughs> I, I think sure that, she um, she's not got this, the same power for it I think there's there's not the um, the concentration over a full season I think you do have to be quite dedicated to it and I've I've kind of seen that a little bit this season. I, it was interesting hearing about uh, Sean and uh, Luke going back to fantasy football of all. My first experience was going back, and it must be, well, yeah, probably as long ago, probably 20, 25 years ago. And what we used to do, we used to have, actually have um, an auction. So you went in, you had a group of you, and we had a group of, I can't remember, 10, 15 of us, and you went in, and each um, manager was only allowed to have one player. So you, you bid for Alan Shearer, whoever the player was, who was the top player, and you spent the money on him and you had a certain amount of money. But only one only one manager got that player and that applied to all the players. And you had that team and that was your team for the season. Whereas going in now, I think I've only done the actual um, uh, the fantasy Premier League for the last three seasons. And I'm improving season on season, but I'm finding you have to give more um, effort to it, more dedication to checking week on week. And if you kind of forget about it then you do drop down it does have an impact on your on your team so you do have to be relatively focused to uh, to get up there and I'm not saying I am but I've, I've improved season on season I'm around about 60 or something like that out of about 250 in our league and um, so still imp- still some improvements to make and hopefully uh, next season I can go the next level up yeah, uh, yeah, I've been keeping an eye on your team, Darren. Yeah, you definitely gradual improvements, but um, I think even now, now more than ever, uh, you've got to be really on top of top of the like organisation and um, on what's going on because all the changes with COVID and um, and re- game rearrangements, it's just so hard to predict. Yeah, um, more so this you, season not, than ever, yeah, I think. Yeah, yeah. If you're not doing all that research, then you're just gonna you're just gonna fall behind the crowd um, who are doing it. Um, so just um, on to the next question then. Um, Sean, I'll, I'll stick with you. How? So you've already kind of answered this. How far do you tend to plan ahead? Um, you said two, like a couple of weeks at a time. Is that for transfers and captaincy? And has that changed more recently because of what we just talked about, about the um, volatile nature of the game? Or have you always been that way? Probably when I dedicate more time to it now I probably plan more than what I've done in the past but I've always dedicated a fair amount of time to it to be fair obviously it's been a bit different the last couple of years with Covid because uh, things can happen last minute and you can plan all you want but then you play against Covid and then he's out for a, a week or two so 
I would say try and plan for a couple of weeks ahead and and with captains it's been pretty pretty straightforward this season early around the season with Salah but when you've got a decision to make it makes it makes it more difficult <laughs> um, yeah just uh, you see if you want someone to captain in a couple of weeks and then make sure you've got them in their way and that's what I'd say yeah, I think I I normally stay a few weeks ahead and just say think who is my best captain, and then yeah mm-hmm. maybe make some transfer plans around that. Um, but like you said, it's so much more difficult with COVID. Um, how do you um, approach the captaincy and transfers, Luke? Yeah, I, th- I think you have got to look a couple of weeks ahead, like like Sean said. I think particularly this season with with COVID, as as, as people have mentioned, um, you've got to be flexible. You've got to be prepared to make changes to to, to your plans. Um, that, that you first that you first maybe had, I think that's important. I made a pretty bad mistake earlier in the season with my first free hit. I was thinking about it way too far, um, way too far in advance, and I was planning for it. And I said, I'm playing a free hit in this week. And when it came to play it, I did play it, and I shouldn't have done because of COVID. And and I got in a mess. And the, the, the game weeks before and after, I didn't do as well as I should have done because of because of that course. And I, I wasn't basically I wasn't flexible enough with my with my decision making. So I think you, yes, you've got a plan, but it's very important that you're flexible and that you're prepared to change those plans, particularly with 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 COVID this this season. Yeah, um, definitely agree with the things both of you said there. Um, staying with you then, Luke. Um, do you tend to look at um, when you're like analysing what transfers to make and what plans you're making? Um, how much of the games do you watch? How many stats do you look at? Are there any tools or like um, like tools that are available online or, or Twitter accounts that you follow um, that you find find useful and want to share with uh, with other listeners? Yeah, I mean, but basically, I'd, I'd say that, that stats are, are, are very, very useful um, in the in this game. That Dave, you, you should be with your with your knowledge on on stats. You sh- you should be doing very, very well uh, with with your uh, with your extensive knowledge that, that, that you have. Um, so yeah, no stats stats are very, very important. And the guy who's who's led fantasy football for the last few years, he actually does databases and spreadsheets. Um, each week for for his teams, and that has proved a very useful tool for him. Um, obviously, and, and if you go on social media, there's there's loads of different accounts that you can follow. If you just type in FPL onto any any platform, you'll you'll get loads of accounts and loads of information that you can that, that you can follow. Um, so yeah, I think looking at stats is 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 a really important tool, um, and I tend to do that. Um, as much as I can obviously you need you need time to be able to do that and the more reading it's like anything the more prep the more reading the more time you can spend looking at all these things that the better you tend to do and in the weeks where I haven't spent as much time on it I haven't I haven't done as well and that that's that's life you know that's you know some people have got more more time than than, than others I, I guess um having said that I still think there is scope to you know watch games and just get a feel for certain players and how players are performing at a certain time that, that in a way go beyond stats. And when you're analysing football generally, I think that that's an important, um, an important thing to remember. Um, one example of that with, with one player this season has been Antonio at West Ham. He's a player who early on in the season, everyone said, you've got to have Antonio in. He's, he, you know, he's, he's, he's scoring well. He's, he's, he's a great player. He's, he's, his stats are great. You know, you need to keep him in. And and I just I was just chatting to my friends about it and I just said, yeah, but I just don't think he's going to get 20, 25 goals this season for West Ham. I don't think he's a good enough footballer to do that. And so I, I took him out of the team quite quite early. And that that's been a decision based not on stats but on just a hunch and just a, just a general feeling about him as a as a player. And, and that you know has proven to be quite a good good good, a good decision. So there is room for for looking at just players in, in general. Yeah, what's um, what's your opinion on uh, on that, Sean? Do you do you tend to look more at stats or um, some more about when you're watching the live games and getting a feel for how players are playing? I don't, I don't think you can go too far away watching a football match yourself and then deciding on a player yourself because you're always going to favour the players that you're you're more fond of anyway. But in saying that, 
there's a lot of information out there that you can use. Um, people, if like like Luke said on Twitter, there's plenty of different accounts that help to specific things that they that they're good at. Like for instance, there's people that can predict the like for double game weeks and so, stuff like that. Predict when the double game weeks are going to happen before they've been announced by the television companies. So that can help you with your planning. Just depends on you can however deep you want to go into FPL or Sky, you can do because there's some people must ded- dedicate so much time to it. Just depends how much time you've got yourself, obviously. Yeah, I think um I know the the fixed the fixture guy I follow is called Ben Krellin and he's just out oh, yeah, he gets it right all the time. I'm sure you guys do too. Um and yeah, I don't know how he gets gets some of it, but uh, yeah, it must take him hours and hours and hours to work it all out. But it's very useful to have um have him on board. Another another useful tool I've found recently that I've not not used before. Um, I could I could probably tweet a few useful links after this anyway. But uh, like an FPL planner where you can go forward game weeks, make your transfers, and actually plan future uh, game weeks with your current squad. Um, and I've always like kind of made notes and used spreadsheets and stuff to do that before. There's actually like an app that does it for you now that I've I've liked. But like we said, most of this podcast, it's um it's quite hard to get more than a couple of game weeks ahead nowadays uh, without something going wrong. Um, so one of the one of the things that I found more difficult and try and um, try maybe switch off from um, is when I do have a bad game week. Um, so what what do you do, Sean, when um, when you do have a an off week and um, and it's like, well, how do you deal with that, and how do you make sure you don't make bad decisions on the back of it? Obviously, when you have a good week, you tend to look at the the table a few times a day. But when you have a bad week, obviously it's different. Because I, I play different kinds of formats of fancy football. If I've had a bad week in one, I might have had a good week in another. So I tend to hopefully just put the other one to the back of my mind and focus on the one that I've done well in. But um, sometimes, like in an international break, it is quite good to switch off and uh, try and just just think about other things for a little while because it can become quite uh, can can take over yourself a bit if uh, you listen to as many podcasts and look at all the things that I do. To be fair. Yeah, definitely. It's always, uh, especially earlier in the season, just temptation to play play one of your chips in it, one of your wild cards during the international break, just to keep keep you tied you over. But that's not always a, a great decision either. What uh, what would you do, Luke, to um, to get you through after a bad week? Yeah, m- make sure you don't make any rash de- decisions about your team immediately after you've had a bad bad game. We leave it for a few days to try and forget about it, and um, yeah, don't do anything stupid. Um, just one other thing, I guess, is when Burnley have lost, which has been a lot this season, turn the telly off, don't watch match of the day, don't listen to any uh, any social media coverage and just forget about it. And it's, I guess it's the same with FPL. Don't look at the league table. Um, don't see those red arrows that come up when you've, when you've had a bad game week and just, just try and forget about it for a few days, I guess. Um, but, yeah. Yeah, I think that's my uh, what I try and do now, just avoid it as much as possible. Uh, staying with you then, Luke. Um, just a bit on um, on chip strategies. Um, do you have a bit of a standard plan at the start of a season of of an idea of when you would use your chips? I know you said about being flexible, which obviously is important. Um, and when would you normally play that first wild card? Because I know I tend to kind of revert to type on that um, the last few seasons. Uh, have you got anything like that, or are you just as flexible as possible all the way through? Yeah. I actually try try and be as as flexible as as possible with that. I, I don't have any strategies as to as to when to play my chips. As I was saying earlier, I think if you if you get too focused on playing a chip for a certain game week, you can forget about your team for for, for other game weeks. Like there was a lot of coverage on social media about the the blank game week that's that's just happened, where there was only a few a few teams playing. And I think a lot of people were obsessing about getting enough players for that blank game week, two or three weeks in advance. And actually, that was to the detriment of their teams for the previous two or three for the previous two or three game weeks. So, you've got, I think being flexible is is important, and just um, and just making decisions not at the last minute, but but having having the ability to change your mind 
and to just just do it when he's best for your for your team and that and that can be as a result of injuries, COVID, different circumstances um, that you, that are out of your control. So I, I try and be as, as, as flexible uh, as as I can um, w- w- with that and and the yeah. So just just, just carry on being flexible and um, I don't I don't have any set agreements as to as to when I'm going to play my chips and I've got two left and I don't know when I'm going to going to play them yet. So um, see what happens. Uh, is it the same for you, Sean? As flexible as possible, or is there some some sort of plan beforehand in place, premeditated or not? Uh, try and stay flexible. You always know that with FA Cup rearrangements and that kind of thing, there's always extra extra games towards the end of the season and blank game weeks like like we've just seen. Like I used my free hit in that in that this week just gone, which I think has been a uh, worked okay. Um, yeah, I think that um, regarding the first wild card, um, I always, uh, I do think back actually to um, the season that Suarez had that ban for biting. I think he was banned for six games or something like that. I remember using my wild card then, and that was, I think, was the best season I ever had because I got him in before everyone else. So regarding your first wild card, I always think that you let the t- let the players that you know are going to do well do well, and then you can get a jump on maybe the ones that are coming into form. But like I say, you just got to judge your own team week by week and then decide on what you think's best. Yeah, I think um, I always tend to try and stick to the template team as much as possible. Maybe put a couple of players who I've got a good feeling for at the beginning of the season um, and then hopefully build team value that way at the start. And then um, maybe wild card in like the first or second international break when you really get a feel for who's on form. So it is one of the things where I'm probably more inflexible, actually, at the start. I will normally wildcard early, even though I try and think, no, I might not do that this time, but um, always tend to see, um, it always tends to go that way. And just in terms of remaining chips, um, so, Sean, you've got your bench boost and your your free hit left. Uh, any specific plans on when, when you'd want to fuse it? Obviously, feel free to say, uh, bugger off, Adam, I'm not telling you, because... Uh, because you might be planning planning against you, but if you've got any insight of when when you would be um, think it'd be best to use those over the rest of the season, tell our listeners then uh, then feel free to share now. Like I say, like you mentioned, uh, the man himself, Ben Crowley, and he is the uh, he is a fixture guru, so he'll probably tell me when's best to to play my next free. Hit. You can play your free at one or a number of ways to cover blank game weeks or to take advantage of double game week so just got to weigh up which one you want to do depend if you want to attack it or if you want to defend him I can keep saying that it just depends on your team week by week so I'll be playing my bench boost when there's a lot of double game weeks and then I'll probably be playing my free hit the next FA Cup when there's blank game weeks again so then hopefully I can I can build up yeah, transfers think- between now and then to get the maximum out of the bench boost get as many double double game week players as possible for that one. Yeah, makes sense. And Lee, you've kind of already said you're not sure, but with a wild card and a, a bench boost left, I know Dave's got his wild card and wondering when best to play it. Any um, any insight as, as to when Dave, yeah. Dave should play his? I think probably, I think it's correct to play your wild card maybe a week or two weeks before there's a double game week and then you can play. Um, have you got a bench boost left, Dave? Uh, yes, yeah, and then play your bench boost after you've wild carded, yeah, in because you prepare for that with you with your wild card. So you make sure that you've got um, plenty of um, double game weekers on your bench for the for the bench boost. Yeah, I think uh, I'd completely agree with that. I wish I had um, used all my chips already. Definitely on uh, just trying to maintain where I am at the moment, but um, no. Cheers, I think that's really just uh, as a bit of information, the two double game weeks, the big double game weeks that are going to be left will be game week 33 and 36 by um, by what um, the magical fixture man has told us all. But um, there, there will be a few odd ones thrown in there just because of all the cancellations. Um, so just staying with you again, Luke, um, what do you think's made you so successful this season? Have you done anything differently? Or is it just sticking to what you've done over the long term? I think having plenty of luck 
I think you do you do need to have um, you do need to have some luck to to, to do well. Um, I'm no real expert on fantasy Premier League. I, I enjoy playing it. I spend a bit of time on it, but I'm no like I say I'm no, I'm no real expert on it. Um, so a couple of examples of, of of luck I had. There was one game week a few weeks ago where I didn't have Salah. Um, it was just after the Afcon, and I decided to delay it by by a week, and he, he missed a penalty, and I didn't have him in my didn't, didn't have him in my seat side for one of the few weeks that, that that I didn't have him. So you know that was lucky. And then earlier in the season, there was one there was one game week where I had De Gea in goal and, and Rudiger at, in, in defence, and Rudiger scored a last minute last minute goal and De Gea saved a penalty. So, you know, you're always in the lap of the gods with with, with football and, and, you know, look, looks very important. Um, having a good start, I think, is in, important psychologically. If you have a good start, uh, you know, for the first few few game weeks, um, that m- means you're more inclined to put a bit more time into it. Um, so, yeah, that's, that, that's I guess, um, an important part of having having success. Um but yeah, just 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 enjoy it really, and just just spending as much time as you can on it, and um, yeah, not getting too not getting too worked up if you have a, a bad couple of weeks, or um, not making any silly decisions, as you know, because because of that. So yeah, yeah. Um, what about for um, for you, Sean? I've, there's always a discussion about luck versus uh, versus skill, but I think. In your two's cases, where some really good finishes behind you, there's got to be some skill involved. Um, what do you think's made you successful this season? With most seasons, it's about persistence, and so many people get bored after a few weeks. But yeah, it's just about sticking with it. But then again, if you if if you it's meant to be a fun game. If you if you don't enjoy it, then then and that'd be why I enjoy it. That's why I that's why I, I tend to stick with it and. Try not to get too high, and I try not, try not to get too warm, and just get through the season. Really, yeah. Um, no, I definitely got to agree with that. There's no point if you're not not enjoying it. Um, how was your enjoyment of it, and um, how else it affected you with Burnley coming into the scene? I know you've uh, into the Premier League. You've already mentioned that you were playing it long before, long before then, but. Um, have you had any bad experiences around being influenced by Burnley players in the past? Well, the ideal game week for anyone is you captain a Burnley player, he scores a hat trick, and that's what we all want. But let's be honest, it's not going to happen. <laughs> it's not going to happen so often. Um, um, I still I do get some stick from my mates if I might if if I've got a player and they're playing against Burnley, and obviously I don't want him to do well, but. They've been successful against us more than they've been unsuccessful this season. Uh, for instance, the uh, I don't know about all yourselves, but there was that week that everyone seemed to captain Vegos when we had the yeah, uh, the double game I week. <laughs> uh, I went. I just had a feeling about Jay Rodriguez. I went with Jay Rodriguez. He didn't play the second game because he, he put Corner <laughs> back in <laughs> or for first game or whichever. Like I say, the ideal week is if it was all perfect. The Burnley player would score an hat trick, and you'd have him, and then you get to watch match of the day, and, and that's that. Yeah, um, I think one of the punishing things for me last year on fantasy football when Wood scored his hat trick at Wolves, and I think last year's winner Sean Danaher um, had him, and I didn't. And uh, obviously, I was delighted with the win, but I just saw him pop above me like another twenty or thirty points, and it were like, uh, I'll let you have that one just because we've won four nil, but uh, still a bit of a killer. Um, what about you, uh, Luke? Same question. Um, I'm, all, I'm always interested at the start of the season to see the, how they value the Burnley players. I always think that's quite an interesting exercise to see what the general, the, the, the organisers of, of the game think of Burnley's, uh, Burnley's, uh, Burnley's players. And I can remember saying to everyone last year, Charlie Taylor's half a million too cheap. You need to get him in your, in your side. He was, I think he was 4 million and he should have been 4.5 million. So, uh, yeah, but, but, like I say, this season's obviously not been not been great. I mean, um, having Corley in when he when he came on and hit, hit the ground running, that was that was nice. But there's there's not been too many there's not been too many highlights with uh, with, with Burnley players d- doing well this season. But there's still ten ten games to go, so you never know. You can uh, we live in hope, don't we? So um, let's just see what happens. Yeah, plenty more double game week traps. Um, <laughs> up and coming. Yeah. 
Uh, right then, um, less of the fantasy Premier League and uh, more about the Clarets' chances for the rest of the season. How, uh, how do you think they're going to do, Sean? Are we staying up? I do tend to be quite a positive Burnley fan, <laughs> all in all, I'll be honest. Um, them two late, late Leeds goals were real killers for us, but I think we'll keep fight. We'll fight to the end, I think. I think we'll just see how it goes. <laughs> That 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 Leeds last minute goal against Wolves was a a real kick in the teeth, though, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah, Leeds, then Everton, then Leeds all in a week were uh, mm. felt a bit of a killer, didn't it? But um, still in our hands. But uh, yeah, nice one. What about you, Luke? How are you feeling? Not great, to be honest. Um, like like most of the fans at the minute, it's it's been a tough old season. Um, I say at the start of the season, you need to win nine or, or ten games to, to stay up and we've won three. So we need to win six out of the last eleven, um, which is obviously gonna be tough. Maybe 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 four or five might might just, just get us there, but it's gonna be really, really tough. I just hope that um the fans can really get behind the, the, the team both home and away. Um and just just have a good feeling. Um, around the place, like there was at the end of the Spurs game, it was it was great that 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 Spurs win, um, and I was hoping we'd be able to carry the momentum forward for that game. It hasn't quite happened, but still, you know, it's still a long way to go in the season. I mean, eleven games is is is, is it eleven we've got got left? I think, yeah, it's, it's it's a lot. It's a lot of games to and a lot of points to play for. We've got we've got a huge April. We've got you know four or five on on paper winnable fixtures. Um, but you know we've got to start picking up points sooner rather than later. Um, whether he whether he plays his whether he plays his reserves against Man City to rest them for the to, to rest the boys for the for the Everton game at home. I mean I think Mick McCarthy did did, did that once for, for Wolves um, away at United and then um, and then won the next game. Whether, whether he does that or not, I'm, I'm not sure. But um, yeah, I think it's going to be tough. But um, Let's really enjoy the last ten games as, as supporters, and it could be the last time we're in the Premier League for a for a while. So um, let's let's go on and give it a good good go and uh, see what happens. Yeah, let's uh, let's hope it isn't. But yeah, I think all the fans have been in general uh, all had the noses pointing in the same direction, staying with the lads. But no, thanks so much for you two, and um, we'll find out now who's won that coveted No Name Ever sticker. Yeah, we'll give an update for game week 30, which has uh, just finished. Uh, on the main table, the top 10 countdown, uh, we've got Will Cooper in 10th. Uh, a climber up to 9th is uh, Sean Retty, up to 9th. Uh, Chris Horner in 8th place. Deck Clark in 7th. Jack Toner in 6th. We've got in 5th place Jacob Sapwell. Uh, Ursay in 4th. Adam Dennett, you are in third, non-mover. Non-mover in second is Tall Paul. Uh, and Luke, Luke Lambert, you're still leading the way. You've got a lead of, uh, what is it, 37 points at the top. Nice little uh, cushion now. Uh, not guaranteed anything, but uh, a good lead at the top. Um, and in terms of the March Manager of the Month, I can reveal um, that we have uh, a top three. Uh, Ian Measures in third place with 271. Uh, Adam Dennett, who was uh, February's Manager of the Month, is second at 278 points. But Luke Lambert, you are March Manager of the Month, 290 points. Congratulations. Thank you very much. L long way to go yet. Long way to go yet, boys. Long we'll we'll get a, stick, a, no, a coveted No Name Ever sticker out to you for being one of our uh, Managers of the Month. OK, and here's the kings of Game Week 30. We had uh, Leno in goal. We had a back four of Castagna, Ailing, Gabriel and Johnny. Uh, we had a midfield five, which was uh, Sun, Trinsau, Saka, Madison and Harrison. And Harry Kane up front on his own. All that remains is for me to thank my co-host, Adam Dennett. Thanks for joining us, Adam. And also to our special guests, Luke Lambert and Sean Retty. Thanks to both of you for your time today. But most of all, thanks to you for listening. We're planning at least one more special and maybe two before we're back with the Man City preview show. So stay tuned for those. This has been a Fantasy Premier League special from the Known in a Never podcast. 
until next time.